Hello and uh, welcome to this week's edition of Politics Today. And in this programme we'll be asking, how close are we to a digital pound? As the Treasury have put out an advert to recruit uh, the new head for the Central Digitalised Bank. And uh, together with the Treasury and the Bank of England are working to introduce a digital pound, which effectively means that we'll be living in a cashless society. And Britain will be asking, what does this mean for Christian freedom? And what does this mean about the times in which we're living in? So I have a very special guest today. Uh, his name is uh, Graham Bridger. He's an author and uh, financial expert and also writes a column piece uh, for Melanie Hart's uh, newspaper. And uh, talking about Melanie, Melanie, it's great to have you on the programme. Uh, and thank you also for recommending uh, Graham to be on this programme. Now, you have a new edition of a uh, heart newspaper so yeah this is the one chance in the program where you get free advertising space thank you very much yes. <laughs> well th this this is the new paper tactics of tyranny are destroying um, being used by the state to attack marriage and we've got a lovely couple on the cover as well and there's a little story about how they met on the inside and we have um, well we, we have some highlights yes we've got a uh, Tony Pierce um, on um, signs for 2023 and uh, there we are that's and we've got a, a piece on um, the uh, digital um, ID and we've got two pages of Freedom Watch and Health Watch where there's stuff for people to pray about which are in line with what we're talking about today and uh, may I just um, also flag up Graham's piece in our last issue of course yeah yes so this was a terrific piece by Graham the great last days money deception and uh, he's written several pieces for Hart in since about when was it um, early 21? Probably. End of 20, yes. yes I lose and he's written about the Great Reset. He's written um, <coughs> on on this theme. And this was actually a two-page piece, all about um, what's been going, what the, what the plans are, and talking, flagging up then in our December January issue the uh, dangers of the um, central bank's digital currency and how it is really. It's a work in progress. Absolutely. Um, Graeme, it's the first time that I've had the, the pleasure of interview. I know that uh, you've been on quite a few of uh, Howard's programmes, uh, The Late Show uh, and what have you. But um, can you just share a little bit about how you came to the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and a little bit also about uh, your uh, financial expertise, having your own financial company? Yes. Um, well, I mean, it is actually how, how we came to faith that actually has driven me for the last x number of years in all the research i've been doing um back in t uh, 1988 february 88 uh, my wife had a dream which was the about the second coming of jesus and it was so powerful she woke me up at two o'clock in the morning which i really don't do well uh, waking up at that time in the morning and i said she was nuts and told <laughs> her to go back to sleep but um, she was very insistent and she gave me the full details of this dream. They were quite astonished at the time. Um, the church leaders that we spoke to at the time um, basically came and confirmed that the points that she had in her dream were all in the scriptures, one after the other. And that amazed us, but again, at that stage, we were pretty unsure what that was about. Mm. So that, that wasn't the bringing together of faith, but that was just soon afterwards. Um, my own story is too long. Uh, I went to the States uh, to do a financial planning conference and uh, I took a book with me, which was called Is Anyone There? Uh, that's by David Watson, for those, th those that might remember of my age, but now he's long gone. Um, and I read it and I made a commitment on the plane, uh, which was astonishing. Uh, and then I went to the conference. Oh no, I then I took a Bible with me as well. That, that is a long story in itself because I, I went to um, a local bookshop before I got on the plane and a little girl of 16 said, can I help you sir, are you looking for anything specific? I said, no, 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 I'm not looking for anything specific. And I delved around until I found a little tiny Bible, King James Version, I had no idea what it was, it was only that big. And uh, it had a cover on it, so it was okay. I took it to the counter and then she took it out and then it had a cross on the front and it was like, oh no. And that was, and I went in disguise <laughs> thinking that uh, all the people in Brentwood who I knew, I thought they'd probably all see me. So I needed to go in disguise, 
which was in a, um, a Russian Cossack hat, my father's, <laughs> a sheepskin <coughs> coat. In it didn't February, stand out then. When it was a beautiful day, and I wore dark glasses. So <laughs> Didn't look suspicious at all then, can no. You, I mean, can you imagine how stupid I looked? And yet I didn't realise it at the time. Anyway, so that, that was, so as I say, conversion is a long story, but uh, the financial services companies, I've had various involvements with setting up <coughs> different businesses. The last one uh, was a... Uh, I was a director with four, four of us involved. Uh, that became a, quite a, a large independent company. It was sold on to, I can't remember now, uh, Noble Lounge, I think. Uh, in, I came out when I was, I have to go by age now, it's not very good. I came out when I was 62, so that's about 11 years ago. And uh, I've been doing research ever since because of the 2008 global debt crisis. Uh, when that happened, I realised that something was very much afoot, but I didn't realise what it would be, and I didn't realise that nobody else would know either. Uh, I soon discovered that. So that's a little bit of a story. Excellent. Uh, and and Manley, I mean, to, today's topic, I think, is the biggest challenge facing Christians over the next uh, few years. I think this is essentially probably the biggest revolution that we had, have had coming since the internet and the transformation that the internet has had on our lives and and the fact that we now our whole lives are going digital and uh, the concern now that we are rapidly uh, maybe even three or four years away uh, from living in a cashless society uh, where we will no longer have the British pound to be replaced by a British pound with a central digitalized bank uh, and for those who are uh, students of the Bible, um, we know what direction this is mm. going to head in, which is uh, the Mark of the Beast and Revelation 13. Not saying that this is it, but it's very, very clear that this is the infrastructure for it. So what are your thoughts on the Treasury uh, recruiting for a new director for a central bank digital currency with the introduction of a digital pound? Mm. Uh, <clears throat> I, I, two things struck me was that um, it's the Treasury working with the Bank of England, so they're very much tied up together. Um, I think in Jeremy Hunt, the new Chancellor, we have very much an establishment figure who is going to go along with everything that is, say, required from more globalist uh, concerns. And I, it, it, as you say, I think the writing is on the wall. And what really concerns me is the lack of awareness of a lot of Christians and their readiness to comply. We saw this during the, um, uh, the pandemic situation uh, where Christians were pulling on their face masks even if they knew that they were absolutely no good at all, but just a piece of cloth to look as if they were complying. Um, and I, my concern is that a lot of Christians are mistaking virtue signalling for the truth of the gospel. Because in Jesus' time, um, he paid his taxes unto Caesar, but um, he and the disciples fell foul of the authorities because they were busy pursuing the gospel and doing the work of the gospel. And my concern is that with the amount of a number of Christians who want to virtue signal and show they're complying with the authorities, they're losing sight of the gospel and a certain, what should we say, otherworldliness which has to go with it, being in the world but not of it. Uh, and Graham, what are your thoughts on uh, the government um, and particularly the Treasury and the Bank of England um, have got a task force now to explore the case for a digital pound, which essentially will mean that we would live in a cashless society. But what does it mean in terms of our economic freedom? Uh, is this the end of capitalism? Is this the end of banking institutions? Does this mean one central bank controlled by the government, and uh, you know, which would be the Bank of England, and one central bank digital currency? Uh, would we have to get all our loans and our mortgages approved by the government? And effectively, if we were considered rebellious or going against the government's, uh, the agenda of the culture of the day, which is Bible-believing Christians, we're already there. Um, you know, is this also an introduce, introduction of the social credit system as well? I mean, what are your thoughts? Well, that's a lot of questions, isn't it? Well, uh, <laughs> I've only got a certain amount of time to, uh, to, to pack into the programme, so. No, no. I, 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 I mean, I, I agree with what you just said. I mean, you said, is it? I would say, yes, it is. Um, the CBDC, as it's known now, the um, Central Bank Digital Currency, 
I mean, this is something that's been coming for a long time, actually. This isn't, this isn't new. And all the central banks around the world are doing it now. Uh, when I say doing it, they're, they're at varying different stages of, of, um, of accepting um, their final understanding of how it's going to work. But, um, you know, when you hear uh, the International Bank of, uh, International Bank of International Settlements, um, whose general manager is Carsten, I'm just trying, Augustine Carstens, uh, when he announced, which I'm not sure that he meant to, but he did, when he announced that uh, the um, central bank is going to be able to control all money, and they'll understand now, I mean, he pointed out and said, you know, we don't at the moment know who's using a, a $50 bill or a, a whatever a different currency, Spanish currency, uh, but we will. So when we introduce that, um, which is coming, we will also have full control over what is spent and how it's used. So we know that programmable digital currency is what's actually being developed. And it's at a very advanced stage. I mean, when I saw Rishi Sunak um, standing up there giving a, a, a talk on digital currency with the Bank of England, that is, his, uh, that is exactly what he's promoting. Uh, we haven't seen that on mainstream news, needless to say, uh, but nevertheless, it is, it's, it's on digital form. So I think that it's very difficult to imagine that when you've got programmable money, which is effectively the Chinese social credit system, and I wouldn't be at all surprised if, um, uh, if the actual software is the same software, uh, but I mean, that's only my, my thinking. And therefore, they'll know what you're spending, where you're spending, what you're spending it on. And that is purposed so that they're giving it all a very good gloss, that it's uh, very convenient and, uh, and easy to use, and you'll be able to whip into shops and you know, not have to show anything. There's that the story that they actually portray, most people have bought already, uh, simply by the way they use technology now. So, I can't see how we can end up with anything but that system. And of course, once that means that you, they, they combine that with traveling, with cars being taken out of the scene, 15-minute uh, cities, 20-minute cities, once they've done that, then they have got full control over your whereabouts. Yes. And then, we're, I mean, it's unbelievable the speed with which this is, being, this is now developing. So I'm seeing this in combination with the, uh, the, 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 the fall of the dollar is, is coming. I don't think it's going to happen within probably two or three years, the actual definite admittance that it's gone, but it's gone already. Um, there are lots of uh, commentators now who have identified all of the workings of the whole system. And it definitely, well, once you can't buy and sell, then you are Revelation 13. Absolutely. Now, you know, you can't say that is the mark of the beast as such, but it's, it's as close as you're going to get. Yeah. Uh, uh, Manley, um, the Treasury advertised the position of a director for uh, a central bank digital currency, uh, currently task force underway. Um, <coughs> so the director of this new uh, central bank digital currency uh, will receive a salary between 61 and 66 uh, £1,500 a year, have between 1,000 and 5,000 employees under them. Um, and it shows that the government I I is very serious. Now, considering that uh, we have an elderly population in this country who only use cash, and we're talking about possibly the, the, the fact that maybe um, <coughs> a, a quarter of our population who don't use cards or credit cards or contactless um, will be completely frozen out in this new digital age. Why has there been very little parliamentary scrutiny on the impl implications of introducing a digital currency, particularly a digital pound, um, that will effectively mean that the government will have total control over our financial lives? And suddenly, for example, someone watching this program wants to donate money to Revelation TV or to Hot Newspaper, and the government says that uh, your editorial position that you're taking the newspaper or from the channel 
um, is at odds with our support for social progressive uh, agenda. <coughs> Therefore, we're going to cut your funding. I mean, we've seen this in Canada as well with Justin Trudeau with the Freedom Truckers, mm. freezing the bank accounts of, of those uh, of those truckers who are protesting um, against Trudeau's policy. So aren't we now entering into a frightening new era of authoritarianism? We are if we comply. Yeah, but I can't see how we're not going to comply because it's money. And if we if the money has taken us and there's no cash and no one accepts any cash, we won't be able to eat. We won't be able to buy anything. So there will be compliance. It's there are alternative systems or people are, are looking into them. And I think Christians need to wake up. I myself need to start looking at this kind of thing because people have been exploring alternatives for a couple of decades. I know of a, a couple of people, one's quite elderly, one's a bit younger. Um, and uh, they would be um, people to actually come alongside and say, OK, we've got to have alternative systems ready. I mean, in our business for, for HART, I would deliberately, um, when I set it up deliberately, didn't make it into a charity, although we have lost gift aid, because I could see that the way things were going. And it's very extremely likely that Christians will be dis discriminated against because of what the Bible says about what you're talking about, the social progressive agenda. And we have to be ready for that. In our business, it, it, with Heart, we actually try to keep checks going. But most Christians who phone up for, to subscribe or um, they want to pay by card. I said to someone yesterday, you know, happy to take a check. Well, I don't know where my checkbook is. I mean, I, I keep my checkbook going. Also, I will not buy um, a coffee in a cafe which is cashless. I will walk out and go without my coffee. These are small things that you can do. I go to the bank, I get cash out, I pay as, as much as I can with cash. I've also, st I felt the Lord says stop using loyalty cards, so I've stopped using that. Um, might be losing discounts, but I'm as not, uh, I'm still very traceable, but not as much as some people. And this is a big concern. The other point I'd like to, you asked about parliamentary scrutiny. Uh, that's a very good point. I suspect it will be, because the government's in, in um, investing in it now without asking anyone, and they've managed, you know, have a, find a thousand civil servants when you've got people on strike like nurses and teachers because they haven't got enough money coming in, um, and yet the government can now look into this with, without needing apparently to justify it. Um, and so I suspect it will be very much like uh, with the coronavirus regulations, the crisis will come and they will say, oh, here's a 329-page document that we prepared earlier, but, um, but this time presenting the case for a digital currency. Yeah. Uh, and Graham, the point I want to add as well, adding to this one, um, it, it does seem a bit of a coincidence that we've got a Prime Minister in uh, Rusi Sunak, uh, who was a previous banker with Morgan and Stanley, um, who is actually our Prime Minister, who no one's actually elected, not even one Conservative parliamentary MP, uh, and he is the one that is accelerating this move towards a, a digital pound. He also wants to bring in a digital ID, as this is being consulted, but there's virtually no media coverage on this one. Uh, and, and considering that this is the biggest threat to our, to our freedom uh, in this country, um, isn't it alarming how our, our media uh, and our population at large it is, is sleepwalking into this catastrophe. Well, it is alarming, but um, I think it demonstrates that, well, not only through the pandemic, but it does demonstrate, uh, I, I hesitate to say, that the government is not for the people. I mean, that's, that's what it boils down to. And most people um, find that, just hearing that, to be very frightening and very concerning, which of course it is. But uh, authoritarianism is what is at the root of it. Uh, I mean, Rishi Sunak and Macron and um, the Canadian guy, what's his name? Um, Justin yeah. Trudeau. Trudeau. Yeah, I mean, all of these people are young leaders of the World Economic Forum. You know, that is on video. It's quite clear. These facts are fully available. And, and most of these young leaders have, been, have, have purposely infiltrated governments. So, yes, I saw a a pastor in, I think it was Singapore or somewhere, saying the other day, uh, as he started his, his talk, he said, well, congratulations, UK. You've, you've got a new prime minister uh, for the first time in history. He's worth twice the amount of the King of England. And, uh, and nobody's ever heard of him. 
and uh, he's the fourth prime minister to have never been elected. So, I mean, the truth is we are deeply, deeply uh, being taken along a road mm. towards authoritarian, complete authoritarian control. And that is, that is not going to come out in the press because they have been clearly told that they are not allowed to actually um, produce articles on this. And there have been no, there's been no end of censorship right across the board. And therefore, uh, you're not going to hear of it on mainstream. Uh, and Manley, why would we not accept a digital pound? Um, looking at all the benefits. So the benefits are improved financial inclusion, uh, reduced costs for business and consumers, and an increased security and efficiency in a payment system. I mean, uh, we already have a, you know, a, a cardless system now. Uh, you know, just tap something, paid for it. You know, who needs to have lots of... of pound coins and notes in their wallets or purses when you just tap a card, pay for a transaction, it's easy. But this would just mean that, you know, that uh, we won't have any of this dirty money in our hands. <clears throat> well, it, it, it is a trap and uh, it alarms me when I see Christians paying for things with their phone. It, it really does actually. And I think, well, wh why are you going along with this? Um, I'm just reminded of Catherine Austin Fitz, who's um, probably on one of uh, Graham's um, on Graham's channel. Yes, she's yes. Uh, the uh, previous housing minister, or not previous, but a housing minister in the United States. Yes, yeah. and, and she, she's, she's brilliant. And, and she says that if you're part of the big banks, um, you're already in the system which will enslave you. Mm. Um, th there is a case for uh, not only looking at alternative systems, but meanwhile, uh, trying to find a smaller bank, um, which isn't one of the big four, which might go bust as well, going back to 2008 when they were rescued, but um, uh, all sorts of reasons, because the other concern is that it's all becoming part of central government. Why um, does the, we already have to all intents and purposes, a digital pound, because people are using cash as payments all the time anyway. It's also very much open to fraud. Um, I think that the, the cash, the, the tap, payments that you tap, what's the limit on them at the moment? I don't so know. about £100 pounds now. £100, £100 pounds, yeah. pounds, yes. I mean, I, I don't do the tapping, it's just too alarming and it will, your money will run away with you. Um, but the other, the other point is that um, it's, uh, going back to Rishi Sunak, um, his wife is the daughter of the man who founded Infosys, and we put this in the paper previously, and that um, specialises in um, the digital currencies and this sort of thing. Uh, they run 85% um, of India's um, digital uh, payment system. So it, th there's then the link up between government and the banks. Why does the government need to get involved? Why is the government looking at this? And this you know, goes back to this business about um, your digital ID because it's all going to be linked up. There's a consultation before the 1st of March. Um, the government wants you to upload uh, all your personal information onto a di digital wallet and so that you can prove your ID. Again, the idea is convenience. Yeah, but we have passports, uh, you know. I, I, again, this is smacks of uh, copying the Chinese system of their social credit system, which is an alarming. I mean, so many people resisted uh, um, a physical ID because of uh, concerns over freedom. Um, Graham, we've got uh, a, a few minutes left to, to wrap up the programme and, and sometimes for a discussion on this one, I, I feel that you know, a longer time would have been justified to talk about these issues. But uh, essentially, if, if, the, if the crowd from the World Economic Forum have their way, uh, we have a digital currency or digital pound in place for the next three or four years. Everything is then controlled by the central uh, uh, bank digital currency. Um, is this the end? of capitalism and if it's the end of capitalism is this now the end of individual freedom and liberty and, and what does this mean for, for, for Christians and Christian ministries in the years to come? Well I mean to say is this the end of capitalism it, effectively it would be but we've actually been drawn into a socialist system for the last 50 years so the infiltration that's gone on uh, right across education, finance, the law is so deep um, that it has it, it, it completely uh, bought off all those people who would have been born into 
you know, who have taken uh, senior roles in governments and uh, financial systems, etc. So the reality is this, is this has been planned for a long, long time and we're merely coming to the end now or the point at which the Revelation 13 is likely to be seen. Um, so therefore, is this the end? Well, it, it, the, the end of capitalism took place some time ago. Uh, it is, what, what, what uh, Klaus Schwab uh, speaks about is, uh, what does he say? Um, it's capitalist, I've forgotten the term now, do you remember it? No. Anyway, the system that he's now bringing... Stakeholder capital. Stakeholder, thank you very much. I'm glad you, you've been reading it. I've read your book. Yes, oh good. Oh, it was in there, so it was. <laughs> yes, the stakeholder capitalism basically means corporations are now involved with government, involved with centralised systems, and the intention is to uh, take over, effectively, the world. Mm. And that's where we, you know, as Christians, we talk about, or we, well, we don't talk about the one world system, the one world monetary system. Uh, pastors haven't been teaching on this for about 40 years. So the, the whole understanding of uh, scripture and the prophecies towards the end, most Christians have no idea. Absolutely. Uh, we're down to about a minute and a half of the programme. So uh, within uh, 30 seconds, Manly, how as Christians should we respond to the prospect of facing uh, a cashless society in this country and, and having a digital pound? Mm. Well, I was at a talk on Saturday by uh, Jason Cart, who's an author, and he's been alert to this stuff for some years, um, from, coming from a slightly different angle to Graham, but he wrote a book called um, Global Trumpet Warning in 2014 and he foresaw a lot of what has happened and will continue to happen. He's updating that book currently. And he was saying that Christians need to think about, well, n number one, being extremely close to the Lord Jesus and hearing from him. And, and then he said, when you are that close to the Lord, the fear goes. Mm. That's the thing, we just mustn't be fearful. And also to be asking the Lord, as well as making some practical preparations, whether um, we should be coming together you know, s selling your homes, pooling, pooling resources, small holdings, etc. Yeah. Uh, Manly and uh, Graham, thank you so much for being my guests on this week's Politics Today. And I want to thank you for watching at home. As Christians, we need to have our eyes open um, to the political, economic and social realities that we're seeing today. We could be only a few years away from living in a cashless society, having a digital pound, where we could be persecuted economically for not uh, following the uh, government's decrees and orders. So while we have freedom, let's use it to spread the gospel. And thank you for watching this week's edition of Politics Today.